Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today we're ranking the Crash Bandicoot games from worst to best. He must be stopped. Before we begin, we publish new content all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The mighty marsupial has gone on many adventures in his 20 plus year run, but only one can be called the absolute best. We'll be focusing on the original main series and GBA series, and therefore excluding the racing games, party games, and the insane trilogy. Let us know where your favorite crash placed in the comments below. Number 11, Crash Bandicoot Purple, Ripto's Rampage. Crash Purple, as well as its companion game, Spiral Orange, was one of the worst games you could get on Game Boy Advance. As if it wasn't bad enough that the narrative was built on a weak premise, the gameplay was incredibly boring. While there was some classic Crash platforming here and there, it did nothing interesting to challenge players, and the mini-games felt lazy and uninspired. Seriously? Hurling stuff to destroy platforms? Tanks and helicopters? Why couldn't they have just made a full-blown adventure on console where the Bandicoot and Dragon teamed up? Number 10, Crash Mind Over Mutant. That looks totally awesome. I designed it and I want four of them. Best of all, with it I can create the most powerful mutants ever. The sequel to Crash of the Titans, which had added a bizarre punk aesthetic, turned out worse than we could have imagined. Admittedly, it was nice seeing Embryo in the spotlight again, but one glaring problem was the art style. It changed so frequently and so drastically that the game ended up looking like a complete mess. Adding to the disdain of players was the aggravating camera and incredibly short campaign. Sure, the writing squeezed out a few laughs from us, but if only the rest of the game reached the same level of quality. Crash, did you know that if you time an attack just right, you can hit back projectiles? Well, you do now. Number 9, Crash of the Titans. This was a severe hit and miss with fans of the Bandicoot. Ignoring the weird changes to character designs, Crash of the Titans isn't necessarily a terrible game. It has solid combat mechanics, and while the Titans are a tad clunky to control, they're still fun to play with their unique abilities. Unfortunately, the biggest blunder was the fact that this was simply not a Crash game. Crash isn't about beating baddies. It's about platforming, jumping around obstacles, and puzzle solving. This had none of that, and we grew more sour towards the game whenever Crunch or Tiny opened their mouths. Really, did they have to become Mr. T and Mike Tyson stereotypes? No, Nina! Uka Uka and her got rid of Cortex. They were tired of Cortex failing all the time. Number 8, Crash Bandicoot, The Wrath of Cortex. Crash must be eliminated. Uh, Uka Uka, need I remind you that Crash always finds a way to defeat us? Look, we understand that many people like Wrath of Cortex, but we need to be honest with ourselves. For a standard, run-of-the-mill platformer, it was fine. It had some good level design and an interesting premise. However, in terms of visuals and technical performance, well, let's just say Milk Age is better. The character designs look absurd under the awkward lighting, you can see outlines and textures like Cortex's eyebrows and Uka Uka's red glow, and audio problems occur far too frequently. On top of that, the GameCube runs some segments at a lower frame rate while taking away the visual details, and the PS2 version holds a few graphical glitches. Basically, it makes the Xbox version look like an enhanced port, which isn't much better either. Number 7, Crash Bandicoot 2, Entranced. For a sequel to another GBA Crash title, there wasn't really much wrong with Entranced. It had great visuals for a handheld game, and overall, it was fun to play. Unfortunately, that's really all you can say about this title in a positive manner. The mini-game stages kind of kill the ride whenever they pop up, and there are times when the game is just way too easy. That isn't to say the game is unremarkable or uninspiring, it's just simply not the Bandicoot's most engaging nor thrilling outing. Number 6, Crash Twin Sanity. At a glance, it might not make sense why we'd put Twin Sanity this high on the list. 
After all, the game launched in a somewhat unfinished state with a handful of bugs and glitches. That isn't to say it's unplayable, it just needed more polish. Regardless, the game stood out thanks to the innovative approach taken by developer Traveler's Tales, who sought to achieve a more non-linear and epic narrative. Yes, the camera was a pain, but the gameplay variety and free-roaming environment were definitely ambitious. With all that in mind, it isn't hard to see the potential behind this game with its humorous writing and interesting concept. Number 5. Crash Bandicoot – The Huge Adventure aka Crash Bandicoot XS. Before the huge adventure released, Crash had only done 2D platforming segments occasionally in its earlier titles. So, this was the first time a Crash game was primarily developed in 2D, and it was surprisingly well done. The controls were responsive, and the levels made it feel like a true Crash game, making it a great traditional platformer for GBA owners. It may have gotten a tad repetitive during extensive sessions, but there wasn't any reason for fans to skip over this title. Our marsupial had proven that he could rock the home consoles and handhelds. Number 4. Crash Bandicoot Even a couple of decades later, this game is still kicking our teeth in. The original Crash Bandicoot can be notoriously difficult, with tricky platforming, annoying enemies, and Crash's occasionally clunky movement. It can be an absolute slog for even veteran players, and yet we wouldn't want it any other way. From the music and sound design to the visuals and colorful characters, there's a reason why Crash Bandicoot, both the character and the first game, has resonated with so many players all these years. Seriously though, some of these levels can jump off a cliff. Looking at you, Sunset Vista and High Road. Number 3. Crash Bandicoot 4 – It's About Time After a couple of highly successful remakes, it was time for the Bandicoot to get a proper sequel, one that picks up after the events of the third game. Crash 4 was just about everything a fan could ask from a modern Crash game. New levels, hard-to-find collectibles, challenging platforming, witty humor, and better boss fights all made this quite the package. Even if the difficulty feels somewhat asinine in the last third, Crash 4 is a prime example that our heroic marsupial has a future that has never been brighter. Number 2. Crash Bandicoot 3 – Warped As the final chapter in the original trilogy, Crash Warped proved to be one hell of a finale. In addition to a handful of challenging platforming levels, Naughty Dog packed in a wealth of levels that kept the game fresh. When you weren't running from dinosaurs or dashing through the Great Wall of China, you were cruising around pirate ships on a jet ski or racing down desert roads on a motorcycle. On top of that, we got thrilling boss fights out of Tiny Tiger, Dr. Engine, and then-new villain, Dingo Dial. Needless to say, Warped was just plain cool. Number 1. Crash Bandicoot 2 – Cortex Strikes Back Crash? Crash, my battery is fried. Make yourself useful, big brother, and bring an extra battery for me. The Crash 2 vs. Warped debate has long been a topic of discussion in the Crash community. As much as our Bandicoot-loving writer wanted to put Warped at number 1, even he had to heavily consider and eventually place Crash 2 at the top spot. This was the game that introduced the dynamic difficulty adjustment system that made the game easier for players by gaining extra lives or upgrading crates while still retaining some of the difficulty in other areas. This would be used in future Crash games. On top of that, the secrets were cleverly hidden in spots that seemed inconspicuous until you realized what was going on. Suffice to say, it was satisfying in nearly every way possible. Check out these other great clips from Mojo Plays, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos.